Joining me live now is the incoming Shadow Home Affairs Minister, James Patterson. James, uh, great to see you. Thanks for joining us live from Brisbane this morning. Uh, first of all, I've got to ask you about these polls. What is going on? How are people and voters seeing the Liberal Party at the moment? Good morning, Laura. Obviously, we're at a tough point in the political cycle. We've just lost office after more than almost a decade in power. And it's unsurprising that Australians want to give the new government the benefit of the doubt. I think that's a great uh, feature of the Australian character, that uh, we want the government to succeed, we want them to do well for Australia. And so it's not surprising that mm. they are riding high at the moment. Uh, but as we know from political history, that doesn't continue forever. And when the worm turns, it's critical that the Liberal and National parties are ready to present a credible alternative, ready for government. That's exactly Exactly what the path that Peter Dutton has set us on and that's the work that we're doing right now. Yeah, the definition of insanity of course is doing the same thing over and over again and getting uh, the same result. Um, so what does this poll tell you about um, the Liberal Party's stance on the voice to, to Parliament? Is there something, some message you can take out of this? Is there some comment on that stance? My view, Laura, is that there's a long way to go on that debate. Uh, mm. Australians really are only starting to tune in to this discussion. Many Australians don't understand what the voice means and what the implications would be and what the risks are of inserting a body like that into our constitution, or indeed whether or not it's actually going to make a tangible difference on the ground for Indigenous Australians, which of course all of us want to see. Uh, so I think over the next couple of months we're going to have that detailed debate, that, have that uh, debate about what it means for Australia. And I think Australians will really critically reflect on whether or not that's yeah. a change, a leap in the dark they want to make. Uh, I'm not sure they will. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's right. But, I mean, what's at stake here, James? Because if this vote fails um, and you don't get the changes that you need, do you think there will be a lot of damage done to the Liberal Party? Will people blame Peter Dutton and the Liberals? Well, certainly um, we would have to respect the result of the electorate, whatever that would be. But equally, the government would have to respect the result of the electorate, whatever that would be. Mm. And I think the Prime Minister is getting into some dangerous territory where he is seeking to imply that people who are opposed to this are mean-spirited or in bad faith. Uh, what would it mean for him as Prime Minister of our country if a majority of his uh, people, the Australian people, vote against the proposition which... He has designed, uh, he has chosen the timing of, he has set the conditions for. Ultimately, the Prime Minister will be responsible for the success or failure of this referendum and he will have to own that. Yep. Let's talk about your elevation to Cabinet. Congratulations, uh, by the way. I feel like uh, this is a role very well suited to you. What do you plan to do in the Shadow Home Affairs portfolio? Well, thanks, Laura. I'm certainly very passionate about the national security challenges facing our country. Unfortunately, they are very real. I'd much rather be living in a time where we had a completely peaceful environment and there were no threats to our safety and security or our sovereignty or our democracy. But unfortunately, they're very real. Uh, my starting point is to be bipartisan. I want the government to succeed. I want them to do well. The costs to our country are too great if they make the wrong decisions when it comes to national security. And I want to help them make the right decisions. Uh, but of course, if I feel they are doing the wrong thing, then I will be compelled to speak out and to call them out for that. Mm. Uh, and, and that's what I've done already in my portfolios of cyber security and countering foreign interference. And that's what I continue to do just on a broader field of home affairs, which includes things like border protection and counter-terrorism, of course, counter-espionage and foreign interference, cyber security, law enforcement, many important core issues that go to whether or not we are a safe and secure country. Yeah, of course. Uh, in your elevation, it, of course, comes about because Karen Andrews has decided to bow out of politics altogether. You're losing a, another senior women, a woman in the Liberals. Uh, is anything being done to retain and, and attract more women to the Liberal Party? Because when you look at the polls today, it's the women vote that is going down even further. There's no question, Laura, that Karen Andrews was a loss to the Liberal and National Party. She's given terrific service to her country and to our party, and I work very closely with her and admire the work that she did in her portfolios. Um, but in this reshuffle, uh, one woman has stepped down, three women have stepped up, and only yeah. one man, myself, has been promoted. So when you have talent like Jacinta Price and Karen Little and Michaela Cash coming forward and taking on greater responsibilities, I think that speaks very well of the Liberal and National Parties and our depth and the breadth of our talent. But you're right, there's no question that we have to do more 
more to welcome women into the fold, to sign up to our party, to run for our party, to represent our party, so that we are reflecting the community that we seek to represent. Just finally, before I let you go, I know you're in Brisbane, but in your home state of Victoria, there's a, an IBAC report that's just dropped. It shows uh, no corrupt, corrupt com conduct being slated back to the Premier or his office, but, uh, well, behaviour essentially unbecoming. What does it say about the Liberals in Victoria when, you know, this is one of four IBAC reports and they still can't seem to take any skin off the Andrews government? Well, as you say, Laura, there have been a number of very serious corruption investigations into the Andrews government, and I think there is a real smell, a real stench starting to develop around that government. And I think as Victorians pay attention to what's happening, uh, they're going to be really disturbed uh, by what's happening uh, in Victoria. And, of course, that's a real opportunity for my Liberal colleagues at the state level in Victoria to step up and present that credible alternative that the Victorian people can trust. I think under John Pesuto they're doing that. They're putting together a great team of experience but also new talent and new energy who want to drive that forward. Mm. And they've got four years to make that sale to demonstrate that they're ready for government. OK, James Patterson, great to have you on the program this morning. Appreciate it. And we are standing by.